established in 1976 okay it's 1976 and it's a privately funded organization uh, that's why it cannot go public or nobody owns it it's a foundation all the revenues profits goes back to a uh, foundation again so uh, that is one thing and it has a strong revenue profit and cash position um and it has integrated with a lot of uh, integration with uh, dun and burn streets and then uh, standard uh, and poor and it has 1000 plus employees and 500 plus this number is keep increasing so now around 700 plus global customers and long tenured uh, service and development teams and zero failed implementation uh, this played a very important uh, this is a very key thing that all the employees who serve stebo systems are with stebo for more than 25 30 plus years uh, this is because why it's important uh, when we are discussing about a product uh, if the teams keep changing and the company is not stable then it is less likely the company sustains in the market for a long period of time okay if company is not sustainable then the product or the services which the customer buys does not get support or uh, quality degrades so uh, that's why stebo has a very strong foundation and it's been uh, operating from 1976 and uh, for almost 700 plus customers in uh, uh, all verticals okay so stebo has customers in retail you can see us office max and these are the one of a few uh, major brands okay and Calruth, walmart toys r us best buy uh conrod these are all the uh big names target bed bath and beyond these are all in the retail space okay and in distribution space uh we have a uh, greener and ferguson um and then uh worth uh Sultan. these are all some of them and in manufacturing kellogg g healthcare is there and now g lighting is there and uh, Samsung, Sony, IBM, even or uh, yeah, even um, Oracle is using uh, some of this product. And uh, IBM was a big customer for Stebo, uh, right? And Sony, Osram, Osram is a lighting company in Europe. So a lot of uh, manufacturing companies are there. And then travel and hospitality, uh, McDonald, and then uh, holidays. Uh, there are. Uh, some of the financial companies also uh, especially the visa and mastercard uh, visa was using stevo step for a couple of years and uh, yeah mm -hmm. so these are the main vertical and we have automotive uh, in automotive uh, a lot of and in us defense is also one of the uh, stevo systems customers okay so then now uh, let's understand we see that there are big brands are using stebo and uh, stebo system application and why and what is it uh, let's have a discussion so uh, i heard some of you worked on uh, already have familiar with step uh, would you like to uh, share what's your understanding about step yeah now uh, step is a application uh, provided by stebo systems so they called it as step um, Stebo Technology Enterprise Platform. Um, and the Arconomy is sometimes uh, ST stands for Stebo, and uh, sometimes it's been explained as ST is uh, Stebo Technology. So, yeah, uh, so that, that's the uh, acronym for uh, STEP, Stebo STEP, uh, Stebo Technology Enterprise Platform, or uh, Stebo Enterprise Platform. And it's a master management tool. Um, it has uh, multiple UIs, like Workbench, Web UI, and then a uh, uh, new thing which is coming up is an instrument that, that is released for only uh, limited customer. Okay, that is a very intuitive uh, UI. It's, it's not available for public use. So I would say not all customers is available for uh, having access to instrument application. Uh, but it's under development, so very few uh, customers have an access to it, especially mm, PNG have an access to it, 
and a couple of uh, big customers have had access to it and they are developing it as an um with now it's kind of uh beta release where very few customer have access that's about uh step and master data management is like uh most of the companies these days are shifting we have seen a trend that most of the small vendors were there right uh, uh they are they are all customers are leaving giving away their existing systems uh, and moving on to stable right uh, i could see the trend uh, salsify is there one of the application i could see lot of salsify customers are completely migrating it to stable stuff uh, because even still compared to other products right stable has a very good uh, flexibility in the way we design so that, that's a good thing uh, this way most of the customers uh, from all the we know right uh, content serve content serve is also one of the uh, mdm tool so that is also uh many people are uh, migrating from content server to stable stuff then salsify these are all small small providers right so you know, most of them are trying are uh, migrating to stable stuff we are seeing that trend also and there is the another implementation we get it from the scratch or uh, when the company is already using their legacy systems and they want to uh, migrate because of the cost involved in having in house system and then uh, complexity will be increasing uh, so the capab- when they want to add new functionalities new capabilities it's very challenging for any in house systems uh, because of the um, investments required for that so many and also the, the uh, it's sistibo step is a time proven uh, platform so it's been used uh, if i'm not wrong more than 2020 around uh, 25 years of development went into stevo step application okay from past 7 uh, 7 seven, seven years uh, step has been in uh, stevo has uh, running a lot of projects into partner prime and partner has been brought into the stevo ecosystem earlier it is only the stevo system who implement the step application and since stevo was unable to scale with respect to implementation um stevo partnered and then um, brought a lot of partners on board so that uh, partners can facilitate the implementation of the project so that is how and we discussed about step is what and the stevo but now we are talking about what is M- mdm okay and it's a technology enabled discipline in which business and it work together to ensure uniformity accuracy stewardship accountability of the enterprise officials uh, all the data whatever uh, we have usually the systems all multiple data the data will be scattered in multiple systems and they at times they will be unable to the management is unable to understand and share what is the single source of truth um, that is where a uh, step comes into picture where uh, all the downstream from step Uh, will be a single data or uh, that step will be sourcing the data from multiple such systems and consolidation happens in step and data will be sent out to downstream system so that is where uh, step plays a major role and most uh, and also in some of the implementations uh, object creation directly happens in step it will not be sourcing any data uh, so that is also one of the possible implementation of uh, stevo Uh, in uh, real time okay and mainly they all the customers are users uh, to provide because mdm is a uh, is a discipline right and we want to enable that to manage the uh, to implement mdm step is one of the tool available in market to implement the mdm okay so that is where stevo systems comes into picture and what all the functionalities have the solutions uh, which we have to implement in mdm and by the way the definition of mdm is keep changing and evolving uh, there are couple of organizations which defines and uh, modifies the definition of uh, mdm uh, gartner is one of them 
right? And Gartner will be changing the definition or enhancing, modifying. Uh, and they also come up uh, with uh, what are the basic minimum things which any system should have to be called as a MDM. And when it comes to multi-domain, similar. They'll have every year, they'll come up with minimum requirement or the functionalities any application should support so that uh, it is called as MDM. Okay, that list keeps changing. Um, so this is this we cannot call a definition, but one of the options what we have in the system, right? And we should be able to create, manage our data centrally and index of the record in master data management. Okay, and enable a delivery of single product view for all the stakeholders. Okay, in support of the various business benefits. This is very important uh, for a business to make any decision and also for the products to be displayed on the website, their e-commerce website. Okay, they, they don't need to, all the stakeholders don't want to look at multiple systems to understand what is the current truth of a product, right? And they want to get the information from only one, which uh, step serves that purpose. Okay, and uh, uh, data stewardship and governance because data stewardship is uh, data and uh, records that will be getting product enhancement and then governance requirement, right? Uh, especially uh, uh, whenever they this is their governance will be more important when there will be regulations, right? Uh, on during the regulations, also uh, systems should be able to adopt and modify their infrastructure or the data handling style very quickly in those times having the mdm will be very helpful and governance is uh, able to verify the data right and it should be uh, very convenient and uh, user it should be able to done by all category of uh, stakeholders okay that is the uh, one of the requirement of the mdm and when we call MDM, it can be product MDM or customer MDM, right? Um, there are multiple MDMs are there because if it is a, just a product MDM, the way it works is different. If it's customer MDM, the way it works is different, okay? And there are some of the MDM solutions which are capable of serving multiple domains multiple domains like it can it will be supporting product domain also customer domain also right uh, those type of uh, applications are called as multi-domain master data management tools right and when it when you say multi-domain it will be the single source of truth will be served to multiple systems one is customer support will be using and uh, sentiment analysis plm e-commerce catalogs tms catalogs are uh, it is still not outdated. Now, uh, IBM is one of the uh, big uh, customer for Stibo system, where they used to generate their catalogs for all their all their uh, catalogs. Uh, these days, it's not the uh, printed version, of course, but uh, PDFs were being generated by St from the step. Even though IBM or uh, IBM had their own MDM. For some time, uh, still they were using Stibo Step for their to generate their catalogs, okay. And then ERP system, e-commerce, so multiple systems will be uh, getting the data and then integrated with uh, Step. So that is why it's called as multi-domain. We can implement any model, any domain, okay. And how we can implement this is just an overview uh, don't worry much about this for now just try to understand the um, how it can be modeled for different purposes and then later we will uh, take it forward uh, we'll get into deep more details on this okay and this is one of the implementation where product is there okay and we have a product hierarchy this we call it as blue folders in step all the product hierarchy and anything other than sellable right products are nothing but SKUs, sellable items the leaf item will be the sellable items in um, product hierarchy 
uh, we also get some of the non sellable items right those will be modeled as entities instead okay that's why when you see orange these are uh, entities uh, so this will be made it as a entity address location or entity and this is how we build a relationship okay we will have a, a product hierarchy and location and then address and it will link to customer hierarchy customers will be modeled as an entity instead and it will have a contact and then account details so via relationship called uh, references parent child relationship and we will be able to build a data model required to store and then manage the um, data okay and then here this is the hierarchy uh, when it comes to this is one of the example for uh, uh, travel agencies and then well, yeah so here we have a vacation property correct uh, where we will model this as an entity and property owner will be their rooms we have to model it is something like a um, B airbnb stuff right and then hierarchy destination on each destination where you have to go and package tours and excursions and the flight which flight you have to take all those will be modeled like this via references and parental relationship okay and when it comes to uh, food industry uh, this is uh, with respect to food we have a, a customer called uh, kellogg's they are into cereals uh, business and we have ingredients recipe menu items will be uh, interlinked and what will what are the consumables and brands and in which restaurant equipment like that this is how we model and again in the same system we can also maintain customer information and employee information uh, everything there are uh, certain systems we have done where uh, both product information and customer information are maintained in single system single step systems but, but, but we suggest uh, to have different systems for different purpose uh, one is product mdm and one is uh, one step instance for uh, customer mdm and another instance for employee mdm like that uh, however there is a possible we can also implement all of this in a single system it's just that complexity gets uh, increasing as we implement different systems different uh, models okay and this is again supply chain uh, who is the supplier and then item hierarchy and the contact store locations so this is one of the uh, possible data modeling okay. and in this will be a what are the possibilities and capabilities of step with respect to our data exchange and data modeling uh, what we see in the center block it's a step tool and we have inbound where we will get the data from different source systems and step also supports different format multiple formats of data in the inbound and same in the outbound step have multiple data formats and multiple technologies via which it can send the data uh, in the inbound section, we'll get the data. We can integrate via SOAP, REST APIs, hot folder, JMS, and then GDSN and manual imports. These are the possible available imports okay, uh, in the inbound section. And whenever we get the data, right, whenever we get the data into system, uh, we are um, one is manual import. Other rest of them are via component called inbound integration endpoints wherein we can control more granular what we have to do on each of the records and what attribute changes those things we can be controlled we'll covering we'll be covering more details about inbound integration in the uh, in the upcoming sessions uh, but for now uh, via rest hot folder jms gdsn we can ingest the data into step and we can perform validation and also a transformation Validation, when I say, if you want to import the 
uh, if you are into automobile or any of uh, that is considered an automobile if you want to import any of the product information only if it has a weight weight value assume only if it has a weight attribute and its dimension only you have to import those subjects the rest you don't want to import into the system so we can do that validation okay and also the possibility that you want to import but you want to flag it as a uh, some issue or uh, incomplete data we can do that in the validation uh, step gives us multiple options whether we reject the data or import the data and move it, uh, import the data and just log it as an um, error or just drag it and wall so these options we'll get and transformation transformation steps we can do it in multiple ways one is via preprocessor another one is like after the import we can perform a data modification that's nothing but transformation okay once this is done uh, once the data is in system we have the following tools which enables us to um, maintain the data one is uh, we can do a data model most of the validation can be handled in data model itself for example if you are creating an if you are maintaining an attribute value like a weight in data model or itself we can define what will be the data whether the data is numeric value or free text we can control so if uh, by default if it's a weight it's a numeric value and we uh, we can ask we can tag couple of units also we can tag couple of units and make some of the unit as default also one of the unit as default uh, via data model we can control most of the uh, validation part we don't need to do separate validation for those system defined set system based setup based attributes or data model okay. and we have workflows workflows is a uh, is a step uh, one of the step tool uh, wherein it decides how data can be handled uh, in typical scenario we don't allow uh, any of the stakeholders to straight come to system and modify some values and approve because we will will not understand who, who did and why he did that action so and if some of the time, most of the time all the changes need an approval right so we will do those activities within a component called a workflow uh, so if you want to modify any record we'll initiate into a workflow and let the user modifies and let the next user or the uh, supervisors to approve verify and approve so all of them will be done in uh, workflow and then business rules is uh, it started with uh, just a helping tool for uh, workflows business rule that's how it started with uh, business rules in few days few releases back but now uh, business rule is a major component in step wherein we can use business rules in inbound integration outbound integration and then web uis and business workflows and then uh, data quality everywhere in uh, most of the uh, step components we can use work business rules business rules are based on business rules is based on uh, um, stebo apis and i will work through sdks uh, over a period of time um, it will it's a java based uh, apis which can be accessed via uh, scripting language uh, javascript um, and uh, you can also use uh, standard java methods also okay and then user privileges and management this is uh, one of the uh, functionality wherein you can we can decide we can model the user privileges such a way we can we'll get a more granular control whether the user can see certain attribute or the user can just uh, uh, modify or user can approve certain attributes so all of this can be controlled in uh, user and privileges management and we have data quality tools wherein uh, the quality can be measured and matching and linking is a uh, is important aspect when it comes to uh, customer mdm and also whenever we have a for retailers it plays a important role for buy side sell side because they will be sourcing the record from multiple suppliers 
uh, but uh, in their website ideally they have to men mention mention uh, yeah they have to mention it as a single product so buy side sell side is required in uh, uh, retailer retail domain so uh, matching and linking is a tool for it and digital asset management uh, step is not the fully fledged uh, digital asset management tool however step supports uh, and have a certain capabilities which can really be able to use it as a damn tool and translation management translation is something very uh, important or crucial for the manufacturer or the distributors who are into uh, global market who are into global market or they want to support multiple languages uh, and multiple region then uh, translation is required okay so these are the step tools and we have a couple of uh, ui um, just a second guys um, okay uh, we have a couple of uh, uis um, step workbench and step portal workbench is developed on java swing and uh, swing based application and then portal is a gwt based uh, ui okay and we have uh, soap and rest for any uh, synchronous read uh, read and write we have soap and rest and then uh, inbounds are asynchronous okay so this is what we have primarily and what step is not step is not an erp system we should not store the transactional data in step okay we should not store transactional data like uh, how many uh, how many products considered we are a distributor or retailer how many products are there in the stock we should not maintain those information okay all the transactional information we should not maintain okay and step is not a data warehouse the warehouse application or the system um, but uh, only um, step will serve as the if most of the projects what we do is whenever they want to do any data warehouse or business intelligence uh, step will be integrated with that uh, via outbound outbound step will be integrated to any uh, bi tools from there they will be able to extract or require uh, uh, arrive at required requirements but uh, step is not a data warehouse system and it's not a front end when it says that um, it is not a you, you cannot expect it to be like very intuitive uis like what we see in any e-commerce however uh, we'll give you direct access to step system especially for the suppliers but uh, step will never serve the uh, never the customer facing websites okay but step will power our uh, step data will be sent out to e-commerce websites and but the ui will be data will be coming from step but the ui will be out of uh, outside the step okay so we cannot design the step as a front end system for the customers okay and what's the step multi domain data modeling uh, it helps uh, data volume these, these are all the possibilities or uh, the capabilities of step where step can handle large volume of data and then uh, it helps in the data management and speed when i say speed is a uh, time to market is what and how many how much time is required for any business to onboard a product right uh, that's the crucial so step will help in uh, speeding up that process and the data quality is like uh, step has a lot of data quality tools via which we will be able to achieve the uh, data quality okay and when it comes to data volume our customers experience is a our customer experience is a massive data growth and expansion of marketing presence so they may come up with a new website or something like that and other fulfillment channels direct and door shipment new marketing when the when a company goes for new market there will be a lot of 
data changes uh, we have to do uh, like we have to adopt we have to translate and then uh, um, we have to get this as per the regulatory compliances in new markets new geography so all of this can be done uh, with the help of uh, step implementation okay and social media customer feedback we can take regulatory compliances introducing a new product line is a time taking task but that can be uh, that duration can be reduced by using step and acquisition of competitors most of these days most of the uh, businesses acquires the other businesses to grow uh, whenever they do acquisitions uh, that is when we see large massive data uh, to handle but step helps uh, in speeding up that process speeding up the transition uh, when a acquisition happens for a competitor acquisition of competitor okay then how what's the data management and how step helps our data is typically spread across uh, multiple different systems and customer needs to consolidate for the uh, single source of truth so that's where uh, step will be uh, used and the uh, multiple system data because each system will have different integration mechanism right uh, so step is very convenient to integrate with uh, multiple system which supports a different data so that's where uh, it has and sometimes customer will have multiple instances of the same system uh, when i say this uh, the data will be duplicates and uh, there will be different versions of data in it in uh, customer system so steps using step we will uh, consolidate and then normalize the data okay and customer has no connected data system uh, there will be some of island type of systems wherein it does not have any connection to other systems but uh, so in those cases step will be implemented to uh, integrate with other e-commerce and uh, other platforms and speed when what's the role of speed in system is that customers need to decrease time to market right that's the main role and then uh, multiple source of data inputs and incomplete data information and duplicate responsible duplicate uh, responsibilities will be there and the data is fragmented and informal processes which can be step will be used to uh, overcome all these challenges insufficient inefficient data management process lack of data governance change in regulatory requirement is there we need more speed because all entire data set has to comply with regulatory so in step it's very convenient and uh, uh, speed will come in handy when we want to implement uh, such a large data set issue okay and data quality becoming increasingly important these days because data drives the world now and different doing different teams will be doing a review approve and the data control right so what via step data quality tools uh, one of them is workflows will be able to manage the sequence of execution and also will be able to control the data quality right and uh, uh, for each of the different standards are above because a review team may be may want to look at certain set of attributes and approval team more are uh, maybe interested are focusing on different set of attributes and the controller is maybe uh, want to uh, have visibility to all the attributes a reviewer may be check, just checking the very key attributes like that there will be different roles and responsibilities uh, can be achieved in step uh, with the uh, workflow and web ui combined together okay uncontrolled proliferation of data points that can be done and downstream system data required not enforced by upstream system this means that um, downstream have certain um, data requirement or the um, quality requirements but the source system may not have those requirements in that case it's very challenging to integrate these two but uh, having step in place uh, between the source and the downstream uh, steps will uh, step will serve uh, the purpose of uh, data quality requirement and then 
will be able to import the data flows from source system to step wherein all the data qualities will be implemented and then only the uh, uh, high quality data will be sent out to downstream system in that case uh, we can implement a step between the source and the downstream systems okay um, late or uh, no there is no errorness in the data okay now uh, we're using the data quality we'll be able to achieve that okay and this is the uh, basic overview how step is uh, you can see some message here okay this is a valid feedback fine uh, and this is the architectural views in step uh, all the this applications will be running on application server right and then there will be a database where the application connects to database and then a dtp server these are used primarily for printing or catalog generation uh, via indesign uh, servers this is the architect architecture of the step overview and in, we have seen most of the if it is not a production or lower environment uh, application server and database will be connected to same but in production uh, typically the database server and application server will be two different systems altogether um, if if you are able to start the workbench mm -hmm. or i would say uh, you have the start page right uh, if you are oh, reaching that start page which means uh, database is there um, if the database is not there you will not be able to see the front end itself uh, when it comes to database uh, when we any customers buy there are two models the custom how the customers can buy step in, in a step instance or step mm -hmm. application one is uh, on prem another one is cloud okay uh, these days from past uh, we can we see very uh, peak in the spike in the uh, number of customers who opt for uh, uh, cloud based solution uh, so what happens in types in, in case of cloud based solution is that stebo manage the application server and the database and all the mm -hmm. services so we'll be using it as a saas model any customers will be using the step as a saas model so uh, they don't need to worry or when it comes to uh, you as a uh, uh, installer or the uh, system integrator or the uh, implementation team you will not be having access to database or the application server physical mm -hmm. systems right you don't have an access uh, when it when it's a saas system because everything is behind the scenes for us we will get mm -hmm. As an integrator, uh, we will just get a system URL, and we just need to launch the workbench and then work on it. And the web UIs we have to develop, to design. That's we will we will be limited only to that level. Even when we build an integration, uh, all the ports opening, everything we have to request Tibo systems because it's a SaaS. So, what database we will be using is something uh, seamless for us. Okay. okay. Um, for now, step is uh, primarily depending on uh, Oracle database. It supports mm -hmm. only Oracle primarily, mm -hmm. and okay. uh, also some of the projects which is running behind the scene uh, in along in uh, Stebo systems that are uh, supporting the uh, Cassandra. Uh, Oracle because the transition because step has been developing. They have been developing step for quite some years, uh, more than 15, 20 years. Uh, so initially they tightly coupled in all their system to Oracle database. Now they are doing a transition. Uh, they have a couple of in-memory tools which they have built uh, is mainly on Cassandra. And uh, uh, there are uh, there is some pilot program going on within Stable Systems uh, with a couple of customers where they offer uh, Cassandra. Because when you look at as a whole step uh, for a customer point of view it is just that how much cost it is uh, how much it is costing for them for step implementation when it says step implementation it includes charges to stebo systems uh, subscription fee and also charges to oracle correct so uh, even stebo do provide a service as a saas 
uh, just consider uh, 100%. Yeah, but... That's where I'm coming from. Uh, when you choose a SaaS model, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that is not the customer responsibility. Okay, when you choose a SaaS model, Stebo will take care of the responsibility related to database. Stebo charges 100%, but 40% uh, or even 20, 30% goes to Oracle. That's why they want to remove that dependency because they're leaving a lot of money on the table uh, because of uh, Oracle. So they are going to, eventually, the idea is to replace Oracle with Cassandra. So this is with respect to database. And uh, as the versions are changing, step internally uh, does the modifications. And then uh, uh, for uh, on-prem, yeah, what you're telling is correct. Uh, it depends on uh, customers will be responsible for providing the data ser database servers. Uh, some of the enterprise customers, what they have is they may be using the database licenses for Oracle database license for different applications. So they'll use the same license and step will be uh, uh, supporting the respective database the oracle version okay and if it's too outdated uh, for every step release there will be certain versions of oracle which it supports so okay and database uh, this dtp servers is for printing purposes so and when it comes to what is the uh, unique selling point for uh, step is uh, rich compared to because we, if whenever we say any tools everybody will compare what is available in the market what is available in the market for the given solution right and now we are looking for mdm solution we have a lot of competitors like informatica reverse and you know, recently acquired by syndigo and then um, uh, uh, content services are all the small players and then sap is also there which uh, to an extent uh, no, kind of complicated. but a lot of uh, these things are there but the value when the step will get visibility is from the Gartner okay Gartner is a independent entity wherein they rate each of the solutions and based on their rating uh, it get more visibility for a customers because all the enterprises software whenever they are buying they just not go away go like just like they don't buy blindly They'll do a lot of market analysis and which tool to go for. Uh, then uh, being in good terms with, uh, not in good terms, being a uh, good rating, getting good rating from Gartner will have a very uh, major implication with respect to number of sales. Okay, and one is functionality. And then another one is the uh, maturedness in the system, right? Which means uh, product can be so good, but there is not enough ecosystem to support that product, right? If tomorrow uh, anybody can launch a good MDM solution, right? But if there is not enough uh, eco space wherein we get a support, or there is not many people already using it, then it's kind of a uh, not sure what's the service they will give all those things are going to be visible. so now let, with respect to what is uh, uh usp of step is rich out of the buck functionality because i have uh, uh, a fair line for, uh, information about informatica uh, informatica is highly uh, program based this uh, functionality if you want to do some functionality it has more uh, development driven we have to do a lot of development, but step out of the box, a lot of functionality wherein uh, most of the capabilities can be just configured. Without any programming knowledge, we can configure a step, right? Only for business rules, we need a programming knowledge, uh, business rule writing, rest all, all the UI screens, inbound, outbound, workflows, everything can be designed without uh, having uh, any development skills, okay? Uh, when I say development, actual programming skills. Okay, only the you, you will be configuring most of the things. That's one of the plus point for step and uniform data model. Uh, it's flexibility of of the data model and then model the other entities. Okay, and when telling this is uh, coming back to your question, Raj, why we don't have access to database uh, is that even it's a on-prem. Steve don't recommend 
any of the customers to work with our, our database directly because there will be uh, the way step maintains the data is not uh, uh, not a simple data model in the back end it's a complex data model they are maintaining even the products gets created in one table entities one table same table assets everything is created in same table and the rev attributes are also stored in same table <laughs> record a uh, node and its attributes references everything is in same table so it's little complicated um, just because of that complex data mod database modeling um, they are able to offer uniform modeling in the front side front end print integration out of the box uh, we can straight away print this because of the capabilities of uh, scene 7 integration um, sorry not scene 7 um, no. on um, just now I explained DTP integration uh, in design uh, server integration via which we can um, print the out of the box and strong integration endpoints it has integration built in for uh, multiple systems both in downstream and source system uh, multiple uh, mechanism via rest so or uh, FTP JMS Kafka so and then rest based is like a uh, we can use it for any of the systems uh, so this is uh it support multiple integration and again in terms of data also uh, we can use multiple formats flat files we can use xmls we can use so it built a strong uh, endpoint and um, a shorter implementation time uh, stebo has come up with uh, something called accelerator packages now uh, for each uh the domains like uh, retail manufacturing um they, they have a uh, accelerator i say in paid uh, subscription or i would say paid uh, one time activity so if you buy step it gives certain standard data model uh, with that we can just Im implement this in a very shorter duration okay. and then total cost of ownership is uh, it involves license and then implementation time and maintenance now licensing and maintenance is more or less uh it, 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 it's, it's the same because of SAS model and it's this they are only the implementation and then uh, uh, licensing i would say SAS in uh, license plus implementation is the two things now and then uh, future safe investment due to ownership um stibo has a SAS model right and that is like a subscription based it is available now a customer don't have to pay one time huge amount um, so it will add it to their operational cost instead of uh, capex so that is one advantage and focus on core domains um but like core domains like uh, um manufacturing uh, then retailing uh, so these are all the core domains step supports and also supports some of the other domains as well so this is the benefits why uh, step is uh, highly valued in the market okay and this is the one of the ui uh, step work means uh, it's a java based uh, ui it is developed on um, java swings primarily in this front end ui uh, i will just walk you through today uh, how to launch workbench and uh, how to access and this is the workbench overview we have navigation in the left panel and then here you can choose context and upload workspace you will we'll discuss more about this in the data modeling section and then navigation same like a browser you can go backward front and then reload and this is the url of a product or i would say url of the current screen if you are in this product hierarchy this url points to product information and same applicable for uh, collections asset classification and we have a couple of view modes and navigation it's kind of if you know any id name of a product or unique keys you can enter and just uh, go to that product information details that, that's about uh, workbench and web ui is as the name says it's web based uh, user interface it's highly configurable right it's highly configurable wherein we can choose what fields we can display here 
what fields we can display should we need to display only id name of a product or the uh, sku or we want to dis uh, display uh, certain attributes everything can be controlled and we can build a different ui for different users and we can also develop single screen we can also develop single screen and visibility or the editing capabilities will be controlled by user privileges only in uh, workbench um, by the way workbench is a highly rich data set our operations are available uh, you, in um, web ui its main purpose is the web ui is developed mainly for the um, data maintenance for the business to use for the developers when we want to configuring the system we will highly use the um, workbench only okay because of most of the feature especially the system setups are not available uh, in the web ui uh, for development purpose we will use the workbench and for um, end user we will be they'll be using the web ui okay and then i'll just walk you through workbench logon so we'll have separate system so th this is the uh whenever we have a step there are two types of uh, login one is a uh, single sign-on uh, this is the system where uh, we have a single sign-on enabled i'll log in now username this is the password so this is this is how you see if it's a um, single sign on enabled you log in once and you will get to see all the options okay and you can if you click this you will be able to launch workbench uh, this we also called a web start page or landing page or server page of a any step systems okay now i gave a login because single sign on is enabled if not whenever we request this url we will see this screen okay and on click of this we have to give our credentials for workbench we have to enter credentials for web ui we have to give the credentials since it's a single sign on i don't need to give credentials here but in the first place itself okay um now let me walk you, uh, launch the workbench because what happens is when you click on this if you're trying for the first time you have to go and install workbench launchers just click here and based on your uh, os whether it's a mac or windows you have to download the launcher it's like any other simple uh, installation package download this and it gets downloaded after that you will be installing it it's just like any other uh, simple uh, installation package you install this from the workbench launcher and then you have to open the workbench so when you click workbench what happens in the background it downloads the uh, required jars the admin portal a uh, lot of uh, things are uh, you had you can configure um, here if you see we have a what is that mm, dashboard do, 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 do. Why did I click? Okay, user activity tools. Logs. We will get a lot of uh, here. I'm searching for another option. Configurations. There is a property called overload configs. Okay. Uh, we are uh, we always uh, we as a implementation team we have a lot of option to modify the if you modify that uh, overload config we get to alter the behavior of step in multiple mm -hmm. ways okay implementation team we want to access that so that we can at least not in production i understand the severity uh, at least in dev if you get an access uh, it's very convenient but uh, it's little challenging we will not get an access for every any changes you want to do in that property file we have to ask Tibo systems especially when you do with in, in uh, integrations piece right uh, you want to test or connect with uh, different servers and you want to uh, check 
the connectivity all those things but in uh, step just for say, security purposes we have to whitelist all the urls or the systems where we want to connect that it connect both in inbound and outbound okay that is correct uh, yeah. so we, while whitelisting we need access to uh, step zero uh, uh, config overload properties or shared config files we call uh, those are not available we have to ask stebo via tickets so when you are um, so some of the projects you will get an access but uh, in some of the projects you will not get an access you have to reach out to client and client or queues a few stakeholders will have an access to stebo jira and they'll create a jira and then you will get it. so it's like it will increase the delay right um so that, that's the one challenge i see for the in developers or the integration team but rest all it's very convenient uh, for the customer they don't want to pay upfront cost uh, and the maintenance everything will be smooth in their uh, saas mm -hmm. model uh, there there is one more option here which is not uh, i am not privileged to see that uh, yeah because it is a sad box maybe that is why Uh, no, it's not the sandbox. Uh, because of the um, privilege, I would say, or uh, so it SaaS could be one of the reasons. Because I have seen uh, there is an option called uh, uh, configuration. Okay. Here it is missing. That configuration will let you know what is the properties available or set on the system. So that I if see. it's not correct, you can request them to add new mm -hmm. properties, things like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, active directory of the client will be there will be uh, details uh, for the active directory that has to be shared with uh, Stebo support and they will be implementing. It's not. It doesn't come on the implementation team because this is uh, also part of infra, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, single sign-on and also Stebo takes care of it. Stebo takes support. So now, uh, just to avoid the uh, delay, I. in i launched the workbench already before the session because uh it maybe you might have also faced the issue uh, launching the step workbench is uh, unpredictable <laughs> uh but stebo is working on it not sure when they'll come up with a solution um, when you launch it downloads the jars okay for every just consider today i'll take a look at it system name uh, now we have this version right uh, 10.2 mp3 and this is the patch version okay uh, in the in in the in this section if you go to about step we will get to know the details which version of step is running what all the other add on out of the baseline is running so let's if you go here we will get the system name and step version okay and this is the license details number of users is 31 number of supplier account number of users so later licensing will be there and uh, whenever there is a change now this version is running assume um, tomorrow this will be patched to another system then again all the dependent jars will be downloaded from the uh, web start page when i click on uh, launch right it again downloads all of them uh, so that will be completely depending on the system bandwidth from my current system to where the system is hosted correct uh, when we connect via vpn it's even get challenging because most of the time vpn will reduce your bandwidth so it's a time taking uh, thing so i have launched the system already okay this is the uh, step workbench ui and here i'll just walk you through this is the tree tab where we manage the data actual data place here this is the place where we see the data and this is the context uh, when Uh, data is available in multiple contexts like us english or uh, no, france germany or any other languages uh, we will switch the context of a um, this data here okay and this is the workspace now it's up unapproved now if i choose this we we'll see the data in approved workspace just to show you we can choose one this asset and this url section will have a parameter workspace id is approved so whenever now the now the data what we see is from approved workspace now i'll uncheck 
uh, then the data what we see is from main workspace. So this is via which we can toggle and then front, back, reload. And this is the uh, option where we switch to multiple different modes. Right? If you want to do translation mode and then workspace mode, let's take this. If you want to compare what the data in the main workspace and upload workspace, you can compare like this in upload workspace and you can also compare with different uh, contexts and different revisions. can do test and then choose anything and then it will take me to that particular object and here uh, when we work on because uh, when we are supporting different customers they, they host their servers in uh, different zones because uh, it's a SaaS different zone most of the time they will host it in uh, if you're not if I'm not wrong you'll be working for US or European customers now um, Stebo got their first Indian customer is from um, we, we have one manufacturer uh, I for page industry is the first uh, Stebo customer okay uh, page industries uh, but most of the customers are outside India so there will be a lot of delay so you have to see this area right uh, when you choose this you just see the, here it is changing to reading uh, when you change this, it is telling a reading. So that is the time you will not be able to see the actual data. Maybe it's a dirty data or some half data you'll be seeing. So give some time when you are seeing anywhere while navigating a reading, give some time. Now this is, uh, I have good connectivity to this system. So it loads quickly, but it may not be the case always for you guys. So, and another aspect is with respect to data here in the top, in the bottom right corner, you will see this red. Uh, this is the latency. Okay. Uh, if you just hold my hover the mouse here, it will give you the latency. See, this is the latency in milliseconds. So it's more, and that's why you will see, you are also seeing the background as a little bit um, reddish type. If it is, uh, if you have a uh, latency is less, then it will be appearing in kind of sort of gray color. And this is like a uh, mobile signals, right? Uh, this is only very small. When you are having a good system, sorry, good uh, connectivity to server, it will be like a range, uh, mobile range. It will be full and then it turns into gray color. So this is the main screen. And we have some of the tools here to perform search. We can do such different types of searches is there. For now, just be aware uh, that uh, we have an option to do. We have an option to do a search via this. Okay, uh, this is a search where you, you can do a search and then do collection and then export and then do bulk updates in the screen. And this is a business uh, background process. Anything in step which runs at taking time or possibly can take time. Uh, all these activities or the processes are done asynchronously via uh, BGP or background processes. In uh, If you are working with any customers, you may hear word BGP quite often. So all the asynchronous tasks will be running in the background. Okay. So you will just start uh, one of the simple example is you want to export something. Um, you could be exporting just one product. Okay. That will be like few seconds. Uh, you could also be exporting complete data set, what you have in the system. So that may take few minutes. So we don't want to uh, um, user to wait looking at the screen for the completion. So these, these tasks will be running in a background. Okay. So that is a background navigation, uh, background process <coughs> navigation area. Now uh, it has three sections in it. One is queued, active, and end. And in the there will also be one more will come ended with error. Um, that those things, right? Uh, I can take a look at export. 
um, export manager pipeline that all are cleared so um, if, if there is any task you'll be able to see here it will list out all the tasks and here you could see very small right if you select this only the task started by you will be visible for you and if you select this heads uh, where you can see multiple people sh shows the process which is started by everybody anybody in the system okay and once we start any process we'll get to know all the details what all the details will be there we'll be covering that in the coming sessions and this is the system setup uh, this is the one section where most of the time will be spent by the developers or the integration team we define the data model in system setup and we create the workflow in system setup we create the integration endpoints in system setup manages the user privileges in system setup unique keys attribute groups everything most of the things we will be de developing in system setup only the data will be there in the tree this is mostly used by the end users and also the, here we have a workflow tabs where we use this to do a testing uh, developers will be using this for testing but end users will be using the web ui for complete data and now here attribute groups are there this is how we create an attribute in step with all the definition and then we can group them uh, it has the multiple benefits uh, why do we group and uh, uh, yeah each object can each attribute can be part of multiple systems okay and then um, we, we can define a action set for this setup action user action and then uh, uh, we can assign each of this uh, action set to user groups and then context um in step there is something called dimensional dimensional points uh we have to build a context by combining multiple dimension points okay so we will cover in detail all of this and there is a attribute have list of values consider you have a brand uh, we cannot and the this particular customer is serving our uh, retailing only working with certain set of brands then we don't want to give a free text for the brand so we can give the enumeration type wherein there will be predefined um, set of attribute values which can be only these values can be assigned to a system so that can be achieved by creating a lovc instead okay um, and then uh, inbound outbound web uis web uis are something very different uh, only we have to create for the first time because we don't have any data any web ui in the system now so we have to create web uis create new web ui is something we have to do in a system setup after that we will be navigating to this screen and goes to that particular web ui and then start configuring it okay this, this is the steps and then uh, we have workflows i'll just show one of the simple workflows here if you see it's already okay this will be the next role makes the duplication yeah this is the this is the steps where we will see the um workbench we have a work a workflow uh, this is the workflow editor id name revision initiate automatically all these things we can discuss um but right when you right click then um, yeah edit step workflow this is how we develop a workflow this is called a workflow designer okay workflow designer we'll modify the design uh, workflow design and uh, they will save it save and exit so these are the options available and whenever we create an attribute of course it has to be on certain object right so instead we have we have an option to create object types here we have object type and structure 
Your basic object types is something out of the box. We will get basic object types, then we have to build on top of it. If not uh, here, these are all the user defined groups are here. We can create data source, external data source, internal data source, contact routes, then uh, business routes, level, product, like that. We can create our own object type. Okay, now under the contact route, I may want to create another group, another folder or the hierarchical object. So I can create this object type. Okay, and then um, we can also define when it comes to uh, units. Step out of the box gives a large set of units. If you want to introduce one more unit, we can do that. Uh, heat length, uh, if you want to add some more unit, we can define a new unit also. Okay. When we create an attribute, we will get to assign its rest related uh, units and we can also choose one default unit. If I create any uh, item, I may add length or area or weight like that. I can add and then uh, give multiple units give multi multiple units uh, it can be pounds kg uh, anything anything like that we can assign okay. um, okay. Next is the uh, user groups. Yeah, um, this is the root of the user groups. Instead, we, we have a lot of uh, some of the system properties can be maintained on users and group section itself. Uh, some of the system level properties. Here we have a lot of options like business rule approval, security policies. All of this can be controlled in user and group on the user and group apart from that we can also create a groups under this and we can assign a user to it this user can be part of, any users can be part of multiple user group correct so in a step we will first create setup actions and also user actions okay right. there are two different types uh, when we will be discussing more details, but now I'll just give you overview. Uh, using these actions, uh, when we say user action, it is bind to certain hierarchy or specific object type or specific hierarchy or specific attribute. Uh, this setup is whether I, as a user, able to edit certain things. That is a system level permission. Okay, combination of this, we will create a user group user group privileges so now i have setup action setup action and user action and when i have a group here i can set a privileges setup privileges and then user privileges uh, the reason why it is done like this is otherwise on each user group you should start defining multiple options right multiple whether they can see that attribute read that attribute modify that attribute approve that attribute so all of this will be very duplicate effort. Set up actions here and mm -hmm. link them to the user group. There will not be duplicate uh, user actions or uh, setup actions. We'll create them here and link it to certain groups. I can link it to here. I choose, okay, I want certain uh, setup action uh, like buy set, buyer setup action and for which attribute group i can choose if i don't choose anything then that action will be applicable to all but i will choose this business rules group okay then when i do this bias setup action is set of action that is uh, applicable for this group business group attributes right. and applicable for all language when i say it's any it's all and all countries Okay. Um, so this is how uh, if i don't again i don't had any 
attribute group then this rule setup is applicable for all the same you it same it's applicable to user groups also attribute and user cannot be stand alone okay they should be belongs to any of the group and also these two attribute and user can be part of multiple groups so with respect to attribute does not inherit any behavior just because it's part of any group but user will uh, get behavior like most privilege will be assigned to the user action set because uh, in uh, stebo the privileges are not given to user at all uh, based on which group you belongs to you will yeah. get the respective uh, behavior the maximum what is the maximum if uh, any user belongs to two three different ad user groups then highest privileges will be assigned out of them cumulatively and uh, in certain cases highest also uh, one user may be having just a uh, read uh, in another group we may have uh, approve privilege so the approve will is like a super super uh, highest privilege so approver will be there whenever approval is there by default view edit modify will also okay so this is the attribute groups uh, sorry users and user group and we have a references references it plays uh, references plays very vital role um in uh, building the data model uh in step we have multiple reference types one is product references which is the relationship between product to product and image and document reference type we also call it as a asset references which is the uh, in this case the target is always a asset the source can be anything it can be uh, product classification anything. and here classification reference type this is the relationship between classification to classification here we can see source and here we can see target so the object the source can be any of this target can be this like that and we will get into more details also in the upcoming sessions uh, here product classification link is just the relationship between product to classification and similarly we have uh, entity references context and workspace reference types so these are the different types of references we have and workspace approved and main when you right click here and uh, create uh, up to certain version of step step was allowing the users to create um we are till certain uh, if i'm not wrong it was seven uh, step seven version or step nine until uh, that we had an option to create our own workspace uh, we have some of the implementations where user will maintain the data in main workspace and it goes to staging uh, first uh, second level of uh, uh, kind of main and then from staging to another approved workspace so this there were multiple approval was required to send the data from main to up staging and from staging again it has to be reviewed and approved then it goes to approved workspace so that was uh, increase the complexity of the system and also need for the higher data storages okay higher data storages so that's why step stebo has deprecated and now the step is coming up with only two workspace one is main and approved and then tables are not much significant for uh, uh, unless you are into a get log generating or uh, pdf uh, printing okay mm, these days i see very uh, low requirement for tables but there are few still uh, requirement for tables okay and this is the asset key uh, urls sorry uh, these are all the keys uh, this key is useful for integration purpose okay so that can be defined uh 
what is what are the constituents of this key we can define if you take this as an example uh, step uh, asset download and asset url attribute this is an attribute value uh, using this attribute value works as a key like that we can define in this case if you see there is a concatenation concatenation of supplier id and then gtin which forms the unique id or unique keys or keys so you can define the combination of attributes yes primary key step has its own identifier um, by default we will get id um, but uh, this identifier is uh, primarily for the integration purpose when the data comes from source system right um, uh, source system we don't the source system does not know the step ids if we just for a simple example um, we can assume that there will uh, uh, safely assume that gtin is something will be unique for each product correct so that's a unique so when the source system sends the data to step uh, in step mm -hmm. we have multiple options either source system can send the id of the object also or the source system can decide or we during the integration we can decide will the step also maintains the same id what the source system maintains that's one question right if that is there then this unique identifiers is not required uh, but if we just integrate and the downstream step creates the object based on auto id sequencing then uh, we want to rely on uh, there should be some mechanism or ways that source system identify its own record in the downstream correct to send an update um, otherwise it will be like every time we'll be creating different different records correct to avoid that um, for uh, to identify records uniquely in this step we have the unique uh, unique key so that our source system will send the gtin and other product information in a feed uh, whenever uh, next there will be an update for that product uh, they again send it area uh, same along with the gtin so gtin serves as the identifier for the source system but i would not consider gtin will be the some if you take this example gtin may not be primary key in the source system uh, it it is an one of the data point one of the attribute okay yeah. and event queues uh this is like a whenever we create outbound event based outbound or uh, uh, event based uh, event processor we will also get the event queues and this is required for asset push management also um, these are available and uh, component modeling um sometimes for a complex or bit more wherever some uh, functionalities require more configuration features right more configuration where we want to say uh, in the now this is an address okay uh, there are multiple fields for an address object correct uh, we want to say each address should have iso country code geo code and distance latitude longitude we have to map that we have to map the respective attribute here so th then step able to perform or update respective attributes correct if you, i'm talking about address is an object okay and we want to do some enhancement or we want to link it to um, a dnb right and during that time it's uh, very convenient instead of having all the um configurations in a uh different object or different entity uh, this is much convenient because hard coding is not correct not uh convenient for anybody because i step cannot hard code the country iso code to uh attribute to under country underscore iso underscore code because each project stand follow their own naming conventions their own standards in naming the attributes so we have an option in such cases we can choose existing attribute for this purpose okay um for this one i may call that attribute as this variant okay so this is how this is where we have a component model for any 
a little bit uh, complex functionality we want to define the data sets attribute id references all of them uh, so the component model is the place where we will do those matching yeah yeah component model and even these component models are uh, very uh, based on the add-ons you have uh, this component model will be appearing here uh, so this is about the workbench and if you think that you have one product or the node which you want to use more frequently then you can just bookmark that in the navigation um, bookmark at a bookmark now i can't bookmark this configuration object i can go to bookmark tab i can do that so um this is one it's very useful it is the same as how we use the browser bookmarks no no um, uh, if you see the uh matching and linking has multiple things uh match and merge and match and link you can use it for both the purposes buy side sell side is something it started with initially when stevo in their first version or second the main intent was buy side sell side that's where they started then they extended their capability to uh entities like uh, suppliers and the customer uh, in step we can do for both product also we can do uh, entities also we can do the match and match match algorithm okay so actually we do match algorithm the outcome could be match and merge or match and link now we can do both in both of the cases but in product in product mdm match and uh, merge is because uh, we will touch upon those aspect uh, there is something called buy side sell side right mm -hmm. consider a case where you have in the buy side 10 products you are getting this 10 products from two supplier mm -hmm. and uh, out of this 10 uh, four are duplicate okay maybe the, when it comes to number it's it's confusing that's that's the right scenario what we will address in uh, match and merge okay um, we have supplier uh, supplier one will be there and supplier two will be there okay uh, supplier two will be there and in the system what we will get is we will get products we'll have just very simple p1 p2 uh, we'll get assume we get 10 products right. and uh, supplier one will be providing this this maybe we can call it as p1 s1 their own version and then this is p2 s2 okay so this is buy side yeah sell side we will have just p1 and here for p2 also we will have another because uh, this is our buy side we will have a, a product type as buy side only. We'll call it as buy side object. And okay. th these are sell side objects. So what happens is even oh. when for these are duplicates, we will get one product, which is in a sell side. But for these products also, we will have one copy. So this mm -hmm. is what goes to downstream in the sell side. So this is how it works. So okay. uh, we will merge. In this case, we are merging the data of uh, uh, P1, S1, and P1, S2, and uh, creating an object called P1. And uh, next comes what data will survive in what. That's where we have a survivorship rule, wherein we define most latest will be survived, or most trusted will be survived, or um, which which is or we can also define our custom logic uh, to decide what what values survives.